Let's take a look at a couple more ways to create identity and access management policies. Now, previously we created a couple of different view only policies. First one we created by using uh, a notepad text editor directly. And then after that, we also played around with using the, uh, the web based editors. Both of those examples had to start with an existing policy. So let's walk through how to create that policy completely from scratch. We can go up here to create policy yet again, and this is using the policy wizard. We'll just keep it with the visual editor and go through its prompts to configure a few statements. So we'll start out by choosing the service. We were trying to create an EC2 based policy, so we can scroll down and find EC2, or you can also type in here and have it filter the list as well. Now, you can go through and add actions manually by typing in what you would like to have, such as giving them describe instances. Okay, we could add that one. Or we can go through and look at the little helpers that they've given us. So they have list down here, and they'll give you all the different read and list commands, and there's quite a few for EC2. It even overlaps into the VPC commands as well. And you can also look at just the read commands as well. So these give you a little more information beyond just listing things. And they also show you the writable commands. These are the things that would allow you to add, change, delete, otherwise update. For our goals, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves list and read. That'll be fine for this particular one. And down here, they'll give you a choice to also define resources. Now, the resources can be defined by putting in an Amazon resource name or by following along the prompts here. Now, what you need to designate is completely specific to the service that you're referencing in the statement. Since I'm talking about EC2, it lets me designate things like what region I might be using, what account I might be using, or what instance ID I might be using. And of course, you could also choose to put in a wildcard for any of those values. So I'm just going to let this stand for everything, uh, nothing specifically. The final section in the policy allows you to designate conditions. Popular ones they've listed here are like requiring multi-factor authentication. If you turn this condition on, then it means that they're only able to use this policy if that condition is true. Another good example is like their source IP one. If these requests don't come from that particular source IP, then it won't allow the calls to be made. This is a great additional layer of security. Assuming this is all that I want to do with my policy, I'm going to go ahead and click review. It'll give me a quick chance to kind of read it over. Again, it shows the access level I've granted, uh, what resources, and then it has that condition that you saw me specify. So we'll call this sample view only uh, number three, okay, and we'll go ahead and create that policy. Great, so we created that policy using what was called uh, the IAM policy wizard. There is another kind of predecessor tool to that, which was called the policy generator. So if we take a look online, AWS Policy Generator, you'll find the generator available as a public tool. It doesn't actually live in the management console. Amazon just makes it generally available for people to write their own policies with. To get started, you figure out what sort of policy type you want to build. Is it going to be an identity policy? Uh, that one you would choose for a user, group, or role. Or if it's going to be a resource-based policy, then you could pick one of these other ones, like a queue, a bucket, a uh, VPC endpoint notification service topic. Now I'm going to do IAM because we're sticking with the same pattern as earlier. Um, coming next, you're going to create a statements, kind of like we did in the last one. Again, the interface is slightly different here. You choose the effect for your statement. So I'm going to do allow. You choose the service. Okay, and we were picking uh, EC2. And this is a, a fun exercise in finding it. There it is, Amazon EC2. Great, there we go. Notice you can check the wildcard box, all services. Okay, if you leave it selected for a service, you pick your actions next, and it just gives you a long drop-down list menu of all of the actions. Okay. Now, you could also go and choose all actions here, or you could choose specific ones. Now, I want to do just describe instances. <laughs> Fun to find these guys. There it is, describe instances. Great. Cool, so we'll give them describe instances, and we'll put in a generic resource name here for any resource. Okay, I can go ahead and click add that statement. So it's put the little statement down here at the bottom. So if I wanted to add another one, I could go back up here to EC2 and maybe we'll do um, allocate address and uh, associate address as well. So this will give you some IP address commands. Again, I'm just going to put in a wild card for the resource name, add this last statement. So I've got two little statements added. 
when you're finished, you click Generate Policy, and there you go. They give you the JSON formatted policy itself. Now, I haven't created the policy. I'll need to go in here um, and copy all of that and then go back over to the Management Console and paste all of that in over here, and then I can create a new policy from that point. Now, all this pointing and clicking and cutting and pasting has got me exhausted. So I'm looking for some ways to try to make my life a little bit easier. And indeed, this is core to the whole world of AWS and cloud computing. Uh, automation and programmatic administration are critical things. So let's take a look at how to build a policy using the command line. So to get started, I've gone back to my text editor and I've made one simple little update to our little uh, policy we've been working with. I added a little statement ID here. It says CLI sample policy. So this should make it easier to kind of identify. I've also saved the file. It's called sample view only for .json. So we can jump over into the command line and take a look on the file. There it is, sample view only for. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my command. AWS IAM create dash policy. And then we're going to have to put in a dash dash policy name and we'll call that sample view only for and then a dash dash policy document and we're going to reference that file that we just created heck yeah that thing is ready to go and I've got it right here boom so we'll put that in great and we'll go ahead and create that so it returns back to me the ARN for the policy that it just created uh, and the version, this is the default one, it's all ready to go. We got the policy ID and the creation date timestamp as well. If we go over to the management console and give that a quick refresh, we should see policy number four. There we go. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our customer managed policies. And there's sample view only number four. And indeed it is the same one that I just created using the command line. Now the policy wizard and the policy generator and the command line tools and text editor tricks that I showed you guys are all useful ways to help you build and work with policies. In most modern enterprises, you're going to find a development security operations or DevSecOps automation model. In that model, they're actually creating the policies using more of a software development approach. So instead of a security professional hand editing the files directly, the files would be written they would be checked into source control, they would be tested, and then they would be released into production. The final thing I wanted to point out to you is if you jump online, you can take a look at uh, AWS Example IAM Policies, and they have a bunch of great starting places. Um, for example, some basic ones on how to set up certain types of conditions, how to reset passwords, how to give basic auditor access. And again, these are all just great places for you to start so that you can write the policies that you need for your specific situation. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.